Hi everyone, <clears throat> welcome to The Capsule. This is the third time I'm starting recording this, because the first time, I forgot to turn on the camera. Then, I turned on the camera, forgot to turn on the audio. So we're having fun guys, it's all good. Um, so this weekend, UK, what happened? Um, Disconnection had a whacking jam, um, seems like it went well, they seemed really happy with what happened. Um, Empire House family did a house dance event. They also had a um, cipher competition as part of that. And uh, the winners of that are up on the capsule. Um, so please uh, go and check that out and wish them congratulations. And do you wish people congratulations? You wish people happy birthday. You say congratulations. I don't know. Wish people congratulations. It's not important, guys. Don't worry. Um, <clears throat> so... The main thing that happened was um, that I went to see Botus Saver's Black Dog, um, which was at Sadler's Wells this weekend. Uh, so if you don't know, Botus Saver is a choreographer from London. He is slash was part of the underground uh, dance scene. Um, I remember him, you know, doing some uh, like house battles a while back. I'm sure he entered some hip hop. Um, he was definitely around at some battle events, um, was always pretty, pretty good dancer, um, <clears throat> far from the norm are his company and they were definitely at a lot of, um, I remember them from like a lot of these, like, let's say in air quotes, community events that we all go to and do at some point in our life. Um, they would always put on a good show, always quite experimental in the stuff that they were doing, I think, um, <clears throat> and yeah, so basically what happened is, Botus Seva, uh, apologies if I'm pronouncing that wrong, Botus, um, created a piece called Black Dog, uh, but he spells it B-L-K-D-O-G, so Black Dog. That's just a funny joke, guys. Um, and he created it for, in 2018, for a Sadler's Wells commission called Reckonings. <clears throat> so the original piece was 20 minutes long that he created in 2018, and... Uh, if you don't know, a lot of theatre or dance theatre specifically is spoken about in terms of length because obviously like you want, when you go to the theatre, you want a show, right? So if a piece is shorter, it's not going to be able to, to be the only thing you show on that night, right? And that's kind of the aim. You want to have your own night at a theatre. Um, I guess one of the aims. Maybe people don't, I don't know. But the idea is that <clears throat> if... I pay money and I go to the theater and I just watch 20 minutes of a show. Uh, I'm going to be like, yeah, like, okay, cool. It feels a bit empty. I want to do more stuff or see more stuff or whatever. It's not really like enough, you know? Um, it's like going to, to the cinema to watch a, a episode of a Netflix show or something, you know? So often what they do is any pieces that are like between 10 to like 30 minutes will go in double bills or triple bills, depending on the length. Sometimes they're, they're a bit longer, sometimes they're shorter, but, um, so you'll have, let's say, like three pieces at 25 minutes each. And they'll kind of be linked uh, based on a theme or uh, either a theme of who the choreographers are, where they're from, like a theme of the night. It doesn't always be, sometimes it's just random. Um, <clears throat> sometimes it's three pieces by the same company, stuff like that. So they'll try and like fit things in. So it's at least an hour. You, I, There's probably ones that are less, you know, I'm not uh, the most... Uh, I'm not the biggest expert in terms of these things. Doesn't mean I don't know anything. Um, so, yeah, the original piece was 20 minutes and it was created uh, for this show called uh, Reckonings by Saddle as well. So it was commissioned. Boat got commissioned, which means he got paid to create a piece. Um, <clears throat> he created Black Dog and it did well. A lot of people liked it. Um, at some point in there, he won an Olivier Award, which is a pretty big deal. Um, Kenrick is another person who won an Olivier Award. I don't remember with which show or if it was for a show or just his work as a choreographer. But yeah, so I mean, Botus is is younger, especially you know he's he wouldn't have even been thirty in um two thousand and eighteen when he made this. So it's pretty fucking good work. Um, I really like his choreography. I think he, he's he's dope. Um, so. Fast forward, he then built the piece into a one hour and 10 minute piece. 
So it's still black dog, it's just whoosh, longer, right? So that's not easy. If you've ever done anything for 20 minutes, trying to do the same thing and making it an hour and 10 minutes is hard work, especially artistically. Um, there's a joke I can make there, but I won't. Um, so he made this piece into a one hour and 10 minutes and it got its own night at Sadler's. Now, that's in itself a big deal to be recognised by Sadler's and to be given the opportunity to have your own night. Imagine, I think he, he said he's like 30 years old or probably maybe, I don't know, that was at the time of this being written, but um, maybe he's a bit like older, but he can't be older than me. I'm 32. So that's dope. At 32, to have your own night at Sadler's Wells is sick and should be massively congratulated, um, especially for someone that came up through the the hip hop scene as opposed to like being a contemporary dancer who was trained in this school and had this connection and this I don't know what connections he had but I just know you know he was from the 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 hip hop dance scene in the UK so dope job for that especially considering Sadler's Wells Theatre if you don't know has a capacity of 1500 seats now some of those seats will be given away uh, I would assume, to people who review the shows, to, I don't know, certain tech people or certain, uh, I don't know if like maybe there's seats taken out for like videography or anything like that. But it might not be exactly 1,500 seats that were sold like at the box office, but probably a good percentage of those. So let's imagine it's 1,300, which is way under underestimating. It's probably more than that that was sold. He sold out Saddlers two nights in a row. So that's 2,600 people. I, d I can't imagine anyone came to see it twice in a row, but potentially. Let's take off another 100 for people that, uh, 100 per night for people that came to see it twice. That's 1,200 per night. That's 2,400 people that paid to see Botus's work at a theater. That's fucking sick. That's fucking sick. I'd love to have 2,000 people watch me do anything um it's really cool and especially like you hear comedians talk about it a lot but with everything online and stuff or well, I hear comedians talk about it a lot but like with everything online and um you know the world that we live in one of the biggest compliments is that people leave the house get a babysitter uh take the train take the car pay for parking pay for the ticket spend their evening you know, go out for a meal before or after, go out for drinks before or after and spend their money and their time and their evening on coming to see you and your work. So that's dope. Um, there's definitely also something to be said that there are a percentage of people who are audience of the theatre. So this is why things, it's, it's a big deal for theatres to give you these sort of looks because there are people that trust in Saddlers and there's people that will go to anything that Sadler's put on because Sadler's put it on. So there's definitely people that showed up not really knowing about Bojas. I don't know how many. It could be 12. It could be 500. Um, but they just went to see because Sadler's put it on. So therefore, it's a seal of approval. It must be okay, right? Uh, kind of in, not really, but kind of in a, in a lowbrow way, like, all right, Marvel have another movie out. I'll go see it because it's probably somewhat, it's a brand. It's somewhere in this range of good or bad. And even if it's bad, it still probably connects to the story or whatever. So there's some sort of like seal of approval, some sort of person that has looked at the work and gone, yeah, this is good for our stage. And therefore, all the people that are audience of Sadlers will trust that person and will go. Um, there's people that will have like a regular, I don't know, like a season ticket for sports kind of thing um, where they'll just go and see anything that's on, whatever, whatever. So it's, it's really good, um, is my main point. Um, what else is there to be said on that? Yeah, he sold it out for two nights. That's a, that's a real dope thing. And massive congratulations to not only Botis, but the whole team. They have a team of producers. They have the cast of dancers. They have the, the music, the person who made the music, edited the music, all that. Um, the marketing person. They have a whole team. So... It's easy to always focus on Botis. I mean, yes, it's from his mind, but a lot of people have dope ideas in the world. So as much as it's dope that Botis assembled this team, it's also the team that has to do the hard work. 
So with whatever you look at, like Just Taboo with Bruce, it's not only Bruce that does all the stuff, right? It's a whole team. Far from the norm. Uh, Kevin Feige at Marvel, if you want. Like, there's always a team that reach out and, and without that, it's very hard. Like, a good idea by itself is not really anything. A good idea needs to be put out into the world for it to be something. And the team are the people that put that out into the world. So big shout out to them. Um, I'm not going to go through and list everyone, but you can check um, on their website or their Insta. Um, But yeah, so that's dope. Uh, What else before I get into my thoughts on the piece? Um, Yeah, just a massive congratulations. Like, I think regardless of anything I'm going to say on the piece, good or bad, I think these things should definitely, like, the main thing should be a fucking massive congratulations. And even more so, like, the support coming from our scene, you know? It's not just because, I don't know, I can't speak on anyone else, but I'm speaking from my perspective. It's not just because you take the art form and go somewhere else with it that I'm suddenly like, yeah, you're not part of it anymore. Or any, I don't know if that's a thing or if people feel that way. I don't. I'm like, cool. Like, you, whether or not you you learned the majority of your learnings outside of the scene or you learn some of it in whether or not you're putting what's in the scene on stage you don't have to there's no um there's no uh responsibility to put this what we do in its authentic like battle form on stage you can change you can play with it whatever you're still i don't care whether you people don't call you a hip hop not botus but well yeah botus but also whoever else i don't care whether people want to label you a hip hop choreographer or a contemporary choreographer whatever like Call yourself a fucking contemporary choreographer if you want, or, or a ballet choreographer. Call yourself whatever. Like it doesn't matter because I don't know who knows, but I know that Botus was part of the scene as well as a lot of other choreographers that have taken it and gone other places with it. So I still think it's dope. I still think it's worth a congratulations. I still think that it makes us look good for people from this scene to be succeeding and doing well. And you can use these things to like for us to be recognized as well so it's like oh but it's like he came from this scene hey we're doing stuff check out what we're doing saddlers or whatever it is you know um anyway um yeah so i'll read you what it says in the program not the whole thing I have a lovely program here uh, i don't know how well you can see that with the reflection um i would say the only thing that's annoying is that not annoying but this program i got for free but it's six pounds they sell it for to the general audience now i don't have a problem with organizations trying to make money we're not going to have that conversation it's a business right what i do have a slight issue with talking more artistically and as an audience member is that sometimes context is well i would say almost always context is very very important when understanding or looking at art and in this piece, yes, you have stuff like uh, the you know the breakdown of Botus's bio and his chor- uh, his choreographic uh, thing, his um the creative team, like he's got all names and pictures of who they are. You have all this shit, right? That's great. He has the cast list, all very necessary, cool, cool, cool. But you also have a note from Botus which is about this long. I don't know, people listening, I don't know how long you can see, but it's maybe four or five paragraphs. Just a a note from Botus. Then you have a two-paragraph explanation of the piece or like a little, I don't know how you call that, bio of the piece. Now, these weren't given out to everyone and I think they should be because understanding Botus and what he had to say about the piece and understanding the piece itself and what is written about it, I think is often very important. It can completely transform your understanding and therefore your enjoyment of the piece. So obviously I don't know how much the team had to do <clears throat> with decisions like this. It may be that Saddlers were like, no, nah, we're selling them. We have to sell this, blah, blah. Maybe they could do <clears throat> a, <clears throat> sorry, more of a full version for um, paying people. And then maybe just a short breakdown or for that was given out for free. Um, <clears throat> maybe people didn't want to take it, you know, like, I don't know what the deal is. If they don't want to take it, they don't want to take it. But I think it should be available for everyone because I think it's part of the art. What Botus wrote, 
and or what the team wrote or whatever is part of the art and the enjoyment of the art, right? So, for example, the beginning of what Botis said is on a note from Botis. I'm going to read a couple of bits to you. Not that I want this to be a fucking audio book, but. <clears throat> Botis says, I started making this show before my son was born after going through a year of not knowing how to be a father. We watched people jump off a building on fire at Grenfell Tower. The COVID-19 pandemic unfolded. Amor Arbery was shot whilst going for a jog. The Black Lives Matter movement ramped up with the murder of George Floyd. In the space of four years since my son was born, all this has happened and that's just the surface of it. Okay, that's pretty deep and it's pretty heavy. Now, let me read you <clears throat> what it says about Black Dog. Black Dog is Botis Saver's beautifully brutal commentary on how the youth of today are coping in a world not built for them. In an emotionally charged hip-hop dance performance, Black Dog reveals the vicious connection of how self-discovery leads to self-destruction. Through haunting childhood memories and adult life tra traumas, how do we fight through our vices to find a sense of peace? There's more on both of those things, but that's what's written now whether or not i think having read that before and after watching the piece whether or not i think that changed my opinion on it i think that's important to be included and i've said this about other things i think context is not only important but sometimes makes the piece what it is i think to know that stuff and to read that stuff is part of the piece as much as sitting down and watching it, as much as the lighting, as much as the music. We can't turn off the lights during the piece because it will look like shit. We can't turn off the music during the piece because it looks like shit. His intention and context, I think, needs to be as integral to the work as that. And I think that's the case with everything. If an artist specifically says nothing about their piece and wants the audience to not know anything, that's a different story, right? So that's a that's a conscious artistic decision to say nothing. To when Nas uh, uh, called his album untitled because they wouldn't let him use that N word, I think. Um, that's a conscious decision to say, well, then if it's not that, it's got no title, right? Botis didn't do that. He wrote something, or his team, or they together they wrote something. Um, he wrote his personal note and the intention was for the audience to read that. Otherwise, if this book, this book would not exist. So maybe it's not a big deal to everyone. For me, it is. I think everyone should get a chance to read what I read before and after the piece. Regardless of my, my or anyone else's opinion about, oh, it didn't connect or, or anything like that. Like, because that's not with this, but, you know, with some people, they read stuff and it's maybe more abstract and they're like, oh, I don't get it. Why is that related? It doesn't matter. It, you should still be given the chance to read what the artist says if they've written something with the intention of it going out to the audience. Don't put that behind a paywall, or, or so to speak. Don't make me pay for the full experience. It's like paying extra for the to have the lights on during the piece, in my opinion, you know? Um, it's like when Ryanair make you fucking pay for your suitcase. Go fuck yourself, Ryanair. Um, <clears throat> so... My thoughts on the piece. Um, it was it was a really well done piece. I wish I saw the twenty minute version. I'll tell you why. With no disrespect, I think I would have enjoyed it more. Um, I think. Okay, so I have a little bit of experience with choreography. I'm not Botis by any stretch of the imagination, nor would I even consider myself on his level or one of his peers at all. However, <clears throat> I have a camera and an opinion. Um, I think it's really hard to take something that was a success and stretch it. Because you built that, unless you built it with it the uh, with the intention, like you planned the one hour and 10 minute piece and then you just made 20 minutes and then later on extended it. Um, if that's the case, then cool. It's maybe not as hard because you had the plan all along from the beginning, right? But it, it reminds me a bit when there's a, let's say a Netflix series and you can tell they only planned one season of it. There's a, a lot of examples of this, not something like Game of Thrones or Breaking Bad, but like there's a lot of things that you can tell when they were commissioned, they weren't sure if they were going to get 
a second season, right? So they make a really banging season and then they're not really sure where to go with it because they kind of put all their eggs in one basket, if that's the right explanation, right? So they set up a scenario or something that once that scenario is resolved, the whole point of the show is kind of lost, right? If anyone saw Suits, um, the idea of Suits was that there was a guy, the, the kind of set up, the premise was that there was a guy who was practicing as a lawyer who didn't have a degree to from Harvard to be a lawyer and he lied and faked it. The whole point of the show is that how is he going to get found out? Is he going to get found out? Eventually, no spoiler alert, if you want to watch Suits, turn it off now or fast forward. But um, eventually he gets found out, gets caught, gets his actual degree, and then just starts being a legit lawyer. Now, the whole premise of the show is gone. The whole point of him being this, uh, you know, fraud and not getting caught, blah, 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 is gone. It's just a show about a lawyer now. So you can tell they didn't, they had to stretch it because they were getting asked to do more and more seasons because it was so popular. And now they're trying to keep going. And it, it's not, um, it's not the same show it was. It's not quite what happened with Botus, but it's just to illustrate my point that things being stretched can be very, very fucking tough. And I can't imagine I would do it well. I've seen a lot of people that haven't done it well. Um, <clears throat> I think this piece, it was amazing. Like, don't get me wrong. It's very good choreography, very well done, very high level, very good use of lighting, good use of sound, good use of... The dance is fucking excellent. Like, I don't want to gloss over the positives right but i'm just going to start with this stretch i felt like it had maybe like one or two gears and it kind of stayed within those right so i think the whole the whole point of it was um let me just look back at the book but what it says is i think it says like grief and trauma are the two buzzwords or the keywords for this piece right let's go with grief and trauma this visually and through movement and stuff like that there was a sense of tension and uh what's the word o ominous like it was an ominous tension let's say that's my best way of describing it that was created through the piece now alongside that botis also uses a lot of sharp changes right so there's um, a beautiful moment at the beginning, which I think is also in the trailer where it's like a moment of silence. And then uh, the dancers um, react as if they got shot in the head and fall to the side. Right. And before that, they're very still. Now, I'm not going to obviously I never want to like spoil too much of the piece. so I won't go too much into details about what happens. However, this idea of a long moment of stillness or silence or slow movement or something like that, and then a snap into something else, whether it's from that way to snapping into movement or snapping from big movements into stillness. It, it's very effective, but it happens quite a few times. And um, I think this is where I start to see signs of it being stretched to an hour and 10 minutes where um, the, the, the methods that worked are kind of being kept going and kept in the piece. So the same sort of atmospheric feeling, the same sort of um, changes, the same sort of choreographic uh, devices or ways of moving um, are kind of repeated, right? And within this, let's say like one or two gears, so like either a super still or like this type of big movement in a, in a um, big movement, but juxtaposed with, soft music or music that doesn't have any sharp accents in it right now it's not necessarily a bad thing i'm i think with my eye that it's i think with my little eye something beginning with no i think with my eye that um it i can i think i can see the signs of it having been stretched i could be completely wrong right the I always talk to people when I'm teaching or whatever about intention, right? If the intention is what I got from it, then that's fine, right? Even stuff like boredom is not a bad thing if the dancer wanted or the choreographer wanted you to feel bored at a certain point in order to get you to a different state of emotion, right? Um, I think, uh, where was I? So 
if his intention was to keep us within this realm, right? And and if we give the benefit of the doubt and say that's what Botus meant is for us to be in this realm and to stay in this thing for an hour and a half, then fine, you know, and therefore I'm fucking wrong. But I would also say that tension and these sort of feelings, um, you know, this these feelings of tension or darkness can become a bit exhausting after a while. And maybe that's the point, right? <laughs> Again, benefit of the doubt, maybe that's the point. Maybe I got exactly what he meant. Um, I think even with something like a horror movie where they want you to feel tense, they want you to feel scared, they don't do it for two hours straight because then it kind of... Uh, it, it loses its effect on you. They go from like a happy, fun moment. It's like a kid's party or something. And then boom, you see something or you build up tension slowly, 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 slowly. Maybe nothing happens, but then you go back to something happy or you go back to something fun and then you build up tension again. And then something happens and then the fucking murderer is in the mirror and then he goes away. So you, you build up and you play with the audience's um, emotions and attention and you let them relax and then you bring it back and then you make them tense. So... I think that sort of thing makes you feel the feelings more effectively. It's kind of that cliche quote of like, um, I don't know what it is, without rain, we wouldn't appreciate sunshine. That kind of idea. I think that's something that I would have preferred in this. I would have preferred more moments where it took me away from the feeling in order to bring me back in uh, in the same way often like a, a, the bridge of a song takes you away from the from the core melody of it so that when it drops you back in you're like ah i love this fucking chorus or whatever it is right i would have preferred a bit more of that where it, you take me out of the feeling to then bring me back in um i think it would have been more effective um i think uh so what on that subject the reason why i think that could have been easily done or or i would have that would have been my feedback you know f who the fuck am i but um is because Botis throughout the whole piece uses juxtaposition really well. So juxtaposition is the idea of in anything in life or whatever is two. Um, it's like a paradox. Uh, two opposing things being uh, put next to each other for effect. Basically, I'm just going to look up the um, actual dictionary de definition in case I'm talking shit. Um, there you go. Yeah, the fact of two things being seen or placed close together with contrasting effect. So. A great example, again, going back to the horror thing, is um, when you hear, it's a dark, dark haunted house, shadowy, scary, tense, and you hear a little girl laughing. It should be a pleasant, happy sound. Why is a little girl laughing not pleasant and happy? It's because of the juxtaposition. It's because you have a really dark, scary room, and it's too late for this girl to be awake. You have no idea who or where she is. There's by context, you know that there's no girl in the house. So then when you hear this laughter, you shit your pants. Right. And that's a very obvious example. Um, conversely, you can talk about uh, what they call gallows humor, which is like people making jokes about really uh, horrible situations. Right. Um, 9-11 or something like that. When people make jokes about it in order to, well, evoke laughter, but also to, to deal with it and to cope with it, right? So the reason it's gallows humor and not just gallows comments. Gallows is like where you get hung. The 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 contraption where you would get hung is called the gallows. So it's like people making jokes before they got hung. But the idea is that it's such a dire situation that when you make light of it, the, the juxtaposition and the contrast is so big that it fucking cracks you up, right? Um, it's same like, I don't know if you've ever like, been really crying about something and someone makes a joke about the situation and suddenly it's fucking hilarious even if it wouldn't have been on normal circumstances you know botus uses juxtaposition really well in the whole thing so there's a lot of um because it's it's you know he's talking about his son and um you know being a father there's a lot of like childlike imagery it's similar to the horror thing but i don't think the intended effect was for us to be scared it was it was maybe tension or to uh, a confusion or feeling of being lost or a feeling of um not really sure what's going on so the juxtaposition for me achieved that because i was a bit like whoa what's going on and then i can imagine having read this which people wouldn't have got the chance to do is 
you know, maybe this is how you feel as a father. You're lost. You don't know what's going on. You're just trying your best. So I get I get why this this juxtaposition position was used. The childlike imagery with the dark um, lights and the the heavy music and the sharp uh, movements is not su- stuff you would uh, associate with being around a child, right? Um, but it was done really well. There was like the, the, some of the costumes they used were like almost like childlike uh, dinosaur onesies at some point. And um, yeah, it was it was uh, contrasted with the movements that they were doing and the kind of, um, you know, it was very big, heavy, athletic movements um, with, uh, how do I say that, with like, yeah, really like almost dramatic connotations, if I'm not getting too fucking pretentious with this, but like... It was, it was, uh, it felt like they were doing a struggle or they were trying to fight something or they were going through anguish, but they were dressed like kids or they were acting just prior to that, like kids in certain ways. Um, so I think, um, he used juxtaposition really well to create some, some great effects. Again, maybe that's my perception. Maybe it wasn't supposed to be juxtaposition, right? I'm just speaking on my, how I, how I read it. Um. So I think with that, I would have said you could go more into that in the choreographic realm. So you have these moments where the 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 big movements, really big animated movements, even those were were very juxtaposition-y, which is not a word. Um, but there was almost like happy movements. They were like walking around and doing big animated like walks and jumps and stuff that felt like happiness or like that a kid would do when they were happy, but on the most ominous music. So... There was juxtaposition in that. There was juxtaposition in the costume. There was juxtaposition in 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 a lot of it, and even in the the contrast was seems like something he's very good at. So these moments of big movement would be cut by something super sharp, or the lights would switch and it would go to something else, or they would go from standing still doing drawing us in with like really sharp repetitive movements, and then boom, like break out and and just travel across the stage super athletically, right? So. I say that to say, because there was so much use of contrast and juxtaposition through all these things, I think the tone and the feeling needed that as well. Because the tone and the feeling kind of stayed where it was, right? And after a while, it kind of like, uh, I got like, I don't know if this is a thing, but like audience fatigue. Like, (laughs) it just was a bit like, okay, I'm just like, this is a long time to be watching this. You know, I need a moment to relax. I need a moment to look at something else. Like, it was very, had me focused in. Again, that's just my opinion that it's it's something that could be worked on. It could be that he wanted us to feel tired and fatigued and whatever. So, you know, if that's the case, then great. If not, just my opinion, you know. Um, what else? Um, yeah, I think... Um, yeah, I mean, his... Um, The dancers are fantastic, like fucking phenomenal. Um, they did a great job of not only conveying the emotion and the the spirit of the movements and the piece, um, they also like executed it beautifully. Like I think the synchronization and re- repetition in the piece are something that I would really um, commend. I think. I don't know. When I go to the theater, I don't see loads or dance theater. Let's say I don't see loads of uh, synchronization and repetition. And I feel like this is something that Boat has brought from the like street dance scene. Is this idea of everyone dancing together? Because a lot of times it's like a couple of people or a few people, and you know they're do- doing lots of things. And a few times you see synchronization like that, like everyone dancing together. But there was a lot of it in the piece. It was mostly like either a solo or a big group piece um so that means also a lot of them were dancing throughout the entire piece so it's not fucking easy if you've ever done i think i I was thinking about it the longest show i've done is a 30 minute piece and even then i'm not in the whole thing there's a lot of points where i can sit down and stuff um but to be on stage for an hour and 10 minutes is not fucking easy so um shout out to the dancers that's that's fucking dope and um to do that while having the emotion, while keeping in character, while executing the, not only the big moves, if you've ever tried to, (laughs) if you've ever tried to do intricate movement for a long time, it's tough. If you've ever tried to do intricate movement after having done massive 
uh, animated movement and athletic movement, it's even tougher. So shout out to them for being able to pull off so sharply and beautifully the, the small intricate moments as well as the big stuff and keep the big stuff clean and keep the small stuff powerful because that's not easy. Often you lose one of them. If you look at more like amateur dancers, when they do the big stuff, it gets messy. They might slip or go out because they're trying to put too much power and can't control it. If you look at the small stuff, it's not as intricate as they think they're being. It's a bit messy. It's a bit bigger than they think they're being or or it's too small and we don't see it or whatever. Like I said, the dancers kept the small stuff super powerful, super clear, super sharp, super in time with each other and not always on beats. It was sometimes uh, like riding over the music, which is even harder to get in time because you have to know each other as a cast. Um, and then the big stuff that I think, I don't know if they had shoes on. I didn't think they had shoes on and like no one slipped. I think it was socks. No one slipped. No one made any mistakes. No one like, uh, got too into it and got over, um, over excited. I fucking, um, put my thumb into someone's eye <laughs> on a show in, uh, I don't remember where we were. Maybe it was in London. Um, because I had to do a pretend fight scene and I had to grab the top of the guy's head and I got too excited because it was a fight scene and it was, it was energetic and, uh, I put my thumb in his eye. Uh, that was Thomas Simon. So I apologize to you, bro, again for that. Um, but yeah, like it's, and that was me not at the beginning of my career. This was me a good 10 something years into my dancing life. So it's really easy to to do that so the fact that they kept their shit together on both ends of the spectrum is really impressive uh and just shows the amount of training and amount of um just skill that the dancers have so shout out to them for that i think that's the third time i've said that um what else uh yeah the repetition is really good i think talking about choreographic devices i think this is really interesting it's kind of like you know it can get a bit um you know like <laughs> in gcse english or something you're like Oh yeah, the author said that the um the curtains were red and this means that he's talking about lust and blah blah and it's like, nah, he was just describing red curtains. Like there's a bit of it that can get there. Uh, less so because, you know, in those times, you know, in GCSE, we're often studying books that we can't just ask the author. I mean, we can ask these people what they meant by these things. Sometimes it happens um by accident, you know? So sometimes like you do something and it creates an effect and you're like, oh shit, I didn't, even if it's the effect you intended, but you didn't intend to do it with that, but somehow it gets to the audience in the same way. But um, these choreographic devices, everything that you use as a choreographer and as a dancer, freestyle or whatever, you can take lessons from this, is that it creates an effect and it creates a feeling. It can be a really minimal one. It can be a really... A big one it can be an obvious one it can be a really abstract one but these things create feelings so um if you uh let's say for example let's take battles if you stay on your line where you start the battle and you do your entire round there this creates something right there's an effect it can be that you look scared depending on how you do it that you didn't cross the center of the the floor and you didn't go towards the other guy or girl um and you you look scared because you were too scared to confront the person. Also, it can look like supreme confidence because you bring the audience to you. You don't go out and be energetic and try and get and get their attention. They just look at you because you're the shit. How you how that effect comes across is on you as a dancer. And there's a lot of I can't go into a whole thing about that, but there's ways to do those things, right? Same with anything on stage with dancers. If you use stuff like repetition, if you use a solo, if you use a solo while there's a bunch of dancers on the other side, if you use two people and they're close together or two people when they're far apart, if you use things that are synchronized, if you use cannons, if you use, um, the, if the, the dancers face the back and don't face the audience, if they, like all of these things create different effects and you have to not only understand what effect they're creating, but why you want to use that and when you want to use that. This is why it's super important to go and watch shit. If you are a battler, watch battles. If you're a choreographer, watch shows. Go to the theatre. Like, I've never understood how people can try and do stuff but don't know the industry that they're trying or, or the, 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 not even the industry, but like they don't go and look at other people's examples of the thing that they're trying to create. 
um it you have to you have to understand what it's like to be an audience member so that you can be a choreographer because you're they're your audience you have to everything is done for an audience if you don't understand how people feel walking through a gallery how can you curate an exhibition it doesn't make sense um all this to say his use of repetition and this again this can feed back into intention because if the thing is meant to feel repetitive and you're like you're stuck in this realm that you can't get out of then cool you know it's all down to the intention but for me that didn't work as well maybe for other people they love being in that world for an hour and 10 minutes um he used a lot of repetitive movements over and over and over and over we often see it with um images of people in maybe like psychiatric wards in hospitals or something i think maybe there's a bit more nuance being shown in in regards to mental health in movies these days but if you think about the classic image of someone in the white room rocking back and forth or uh, banging their head against a wall or something like that. It's, it creates a feeling of, uh, what's the right word for that? But um, almost hopelessness, almost like um, it's like trauma because you're like banging your head against the wall because you're so affected by this thing. Now, whether or not that's the right way to portray mental health is a different story, not dealing with that now. But I think with this, what Botus was doing was obviously not doing this cliche like straight jacket banging his head against the wall, but he was evoking that with uh, repetitive movements that felt like he was trying to do something and it kept circle, 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 round, round. And it was like uh, almost like he didn't know what else to do. He didn't have any other options. Um, he was trying the same things, which, again, speaks to not really being sure how to deal with things as as a father or as a person in general, um, especially, you know, he's talking about. Um, a lot of these uh, racially motivated things that happened since his son was born. And it's like, again, this is all, all the sort of things where you can feel like he's evoking that through the movement, the re repetition of this traumatic stuff that's happening over and over and over. Um, so, yeah, I think also like to explain it, because I've always felt like, uh, you know, sometimes I don't see the link between stuff. And when I was younger, I used to find it a bit pretentious when people would say stuff like what I just said. But the idea is not always to tell a story um, at face value. Like, this is me feeling trauma. This is me feeling trauma. Because some people just sit still and cry. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, there's, it's often not that. But what you want to do as a choreographer or as an artist is to do something that either is is the root of the the thing is created from the feeling so if it's trauma it's like okay let's go into the trauma let's think about how i feel and let's like either mirror that or find an abstract way to present that so um sometimes there's paintings that like i don't know it's just like smudges everywhere and blah 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 and it's like they're like, oh, this is my take on chaos. And you're like, what do you mean? It, I don't get why this is chaos. It's like, it's not that you're showing chaos through a painting, I think, or a picture or whatever it might be. It's not that you're like, this is chaos. This is my picture of chaos, right? In the same way that we would say, this is my picture of the queen that I drew. But what they're doing is saying, this picture is how chaos feels to me which is a really abstract. And you, if you find it pretentious or you find it like you can't connect with it, then totally fine. You know, everyone's entitled to their own feelings on art. And they're all valid. It's not that you don't get it if that's not for you. But it's kind of like that with this piece and a lot of the stuff. I feel like it wasn't meant to be like, this is what it looks like to be a father. This is what it looks like to be uh, wrapped up in trauma or grief. But it's like, this is how it, this world he's created is how it feels to him to have trauma and grief going on, right? And I think if you look at a lot of art through that lens, if it's on the abstract realm, and this is why intention, going back to the very beginning, intention is important. Because if he had said in the, he didn't, but if he had said in the thing, this is a story about me having a kid, I would say, mm, I didn't see much of a narrative in that sense, or like, I didn't, I didn't understand the story, blah, blah. However, he didn't say that. He said, It's a beautifully brutal commentary. Now, a lot of art is uh, written in a fancy way, <laughs> to to be honest. And written, you know, you have to kind of um, 
read past the fancy wording. Um, a commentary on something. What does that mean? Uh, it's not the. It's not what it means. Like me commenting on the piece, which I'm doing right now. It's it's a way of saying this is a reflection of, or this is um, me making work inspired by the piece. Right. This is often a word that is used in the art world. It's a commentary on. It's a commentary on chaos, but it's a painting full of smudges. I don't get it. Why? What are they commenting? It's not quite what it means. And again, another conversation we could have another time is the kind of pretentious wording of art. It's part of the packaging. Some people like to read these fancy things. Like if it was me, I would prefer maybe slightly less convoluted wording in general in the arts world. I'm not talking about Botus's program. In general, in the art world, I would prefer slightly less convoluted and uh, confusing wording. Like, say what you're trying to say. I think there's also a line, there's also a middle ground between that and saying, this piece is about what I think is wicked about uh, fucking smoking, and uh, therefore, it's me smoking on stage, and it's well good, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Like, somewhere in between. So, like, I want expressive use of language to help me connect to your piece, but if you go so far as to confuse me, I feel like a dickhead for not understanding and therefore I'm disconnected from your piece. Again, a conversation for another time. Um, <clears throat> I've probably had it on more than one pod. But um, so I think, yeah, to, all that to say is like, I think the idea of the piece was to make you feel how, or try and give you an insight into his head about how these things feel to him. So there's, it's almost like a you can imagine him trying to show us his dreams or nightmares in a way it's like it doesn't quite make sense in a in a linear narrative fashion but it it you see flashes of the childlike imagery you see flashes of darkness you see it's it's um traumatic in places it's calm in places and if you kind of put it into like a abstract bubble like that you're like oh, okay I do see how that links to what was on stage or I do see how what was on stage links to what could have potentially been in his head um and I think that's yeah like I said a lot of times is how how art is created and I think this is what a lot of people don't connect with because they go and they expect um like <sighs> some of the zoo nation shows like into the hoods or something where it's a it's a linear narrative story here is this character here is their objective here is the obstacles they have to overcome to get to that objective here is the resolution of that story this is not quite that and a lot of more abstract art and i would dare to say a lot of dance theater Although, have I seen all of the dance theatre? No, but I would say a lot of dance theatre is more abstract, so it's not quite a straight-up story. Even sometimes when they say it is a straight-up story, and you're a bit like, huh? Um, but yeah, so I would I would say, on that note, try and f if you're going to watch stuff and you don't quite connect with it because it feels a bit like, what the fuck is this? Try to, try to look at the intention by reading the programme or, or understanding what the piece is about, in air quotes. Um, and try to try to boil it down to like feelings and thoughts and like not so much the linear like, oh, this is the story of this happening. But what is the feeling that the artist wanted to get across? What is the what is the kind of <sighs> try not to be pretentious, but like the deeper message in a way like it's about trauma and grief. So that's the, the what I would hold on to with this trauma, grief, grief and fatherhood. Does this kind of give me a little insight and into the feelings that he might have felt? I think so. I think that I can understand, not that I know anything about these things. Have I dealt with grief? Yes. Have I dealt with trauma? Debatable. Have I dealt with fatherhood? No. Um, but do I feel like I get an insight into the types of things that he was feeling throughout this process? Yes. Was that his intention? I think so. Was Does that make the piece a success? Probably. I think, I, I said this the other day when I was teaching, um, when I was lecturing, actually, which makes me sound a lot more uh, smart than I am. But I said that um, the worst co uh, insult for me as an artist would be for someone to say, meh, it was all right. I would rather someone stand up and throw their laptop across the room from watching one of my videos 
and say that I fucking hate this or I disagree or watch the pod and say, I disagree with what you said, which people have. Um, or for them to say, I fucking love it. It's the best thing in the world. I would rather they say either of those two extremes than to say, meh, it was all right. Because for me, one of the one of the main things about art is that it should make you feel something or evoke a conversation or yeah make you like question something or make you feel good bad whatever that's why i think it's a shame when a lot of people feel bored by like art galleries and stuff and even more so i think it's a shame or dance pieces or they go to the ballet and they feel fucking bored and even more so they don't and this is again i don't want to go down this road but they feel like it's not valid like they felt bored because they didn't get it or they felt bored because they're not as cultured as other people first of all all feelings when seeing art if you paid for your ticket and it's not an invite only event if you paid for your ticket you have a right to feel how you feel no matter who you are or what background you come from if you're at an art gallery and you're bored it doesn't matter if you're a 12 year old they sold you the ticket you have a right to to your feelings about that art whether or not it's what the artist intended right um i think it's a shame when people feel bored because the point is to feel something, right? And that's definitely most of the time not what the overall intended feeling was for you to leave the theatre or the gallery feeling bored. Maybe at points, like I said, to, to contrast and to balance and to tell a story, you want moments of lull to come back up. But you don't, most of the time, don't want someone leaving your exhibition, uh, dance show, whatever, feeling bored. Um, and I think, you know, maybe it speaks about the institutions where these art things are being held um because i've been to a lot of shows and exhibitions and stuff by younger people and i feel stuff sometimes i fucking hate the work sometimes i think it's shit sometimes i love it um and yeah i think uh yeah there's a whole nother conversation in there which i'm not going to go into because we're already way over time um but yeah i i don't really write stuff down for these pods especially with the reviews and stuff uh, i'm just kind of speaking off i mean i have a couple of notes of things i wanted to remember to talk about but like not anything in depth so apologies if it's a bit all over the place and um yeah i hope it was like you know th there was something to be taken from it um i would definitely recommend seeing black dog although i would recommend seeing everything like <laughs> see as much shit as you can there's not a lot of stuff if you're an artist that i would say don't go and see it even if you're gonna hate it go and see why you hate it and what they did wrong and learn from it i don't think you'll hate black dog i think you'll like it um i can't imagine anyone saying i fucking hated that piece it's very good um any criticisms i have of it are just me thinking as a choreographer and as an audience member but also a choreographer in the audience <laughs> saying i would have done that differently i would have done that like this which is you know i can say that all i fucking want i'm not in botus's position so if he wants to tell me to piss off that's totally up to him um but yeah overall nothing like overly negative to say about the piece i think it's, it's great i think he's done a fantastic job especially for his first um hour and te like his first full-length production um I think it's dope. I think he's got an amazing team. I think he's got an amazing cast of dancers who are like really loyal and dedicated and work their fucking asses off apparently by what we can see on stage. Um, and that's not always easy to get. Um, and from what I gather, a lot of them are his friends and people that he's kind of worked with for a long time. So that's really dope. And it's, it, it helps to have a team that you trust. And um, yeah. And I think, you know, with stuff like you have Breaking Convention, as an organization in, in Sadler's Wells, which is tends to be more on the family uh, entertainment end, but it's which is, he's moving more into this kind of um, theatrical end. Um, not that it's not entertaining, but it's a different type of entertainment, maybe potentially more adult. Like, I don't know that I'd take a 10 year old to go and watch the show. Um, but it's nice we're starting to see more of a scope of different things, you know, at the same time as breaking convention, you have Botis winning an Olivier award and selling out Sadlers. At the same time as this, you have Sonny and Karam, like getting ready for the Olympics. At the same time as that, you have like 
uh, I don't know, like all the different aspects of where we're reaching. And I think that's dope. And I think we all need to kind of be aware of each other and to like support each other. And I hate the fucking word support because often it means nothing. But let's put it this way, like give each other moral support. Like for, for I, I don't consider myself on the top level of anything dance wise. I think I'm all right at a few things. Um, but I think, you know, for like some of our greats to, to say to some of the other greats, I see what you're doing. Keep it up. Like I'm hustling over here. You're hustling over there. The, the end product being is that our scene gets more recognition and more resources and more, uh, attention, I guess. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'm not telling people how to live their lives. So if you don't want to talk to each other, that's totally fine also. Um, yeah. Anyway, that is my thoughts on Botus Saver's Black Dog. I think I'm saying that right. Saver. Sever. Botus Saver. Sorry if I mispronounce that, bro. Um, and Botus, if you're out there and you want to come on the podcast, I would love to have you. So please, uh, let me know. Um, if you're even listening to this, um, or if someone is listening to this that's in Far From The Normal Works of Botus, please let him know that I'd love to have him on the pod, if ever he wants to. Um, what else? Nothing, I think. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see if there's anything. I'm just looking to see if there's anything coming up. Anything coming up. I don't know. Um, I will let you know after it has happened, though. Um, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, for another week um i wrote an insta story about it today but uh, you know the messages and people writing me to tell me that they enjoy listening to the pod is always like super motivational and um the numbers themselves don't really like blow my mind in a way um but to to feel the impact of it like people telling me that they they uh took stuff from it or somebody told me that when i talked about dance your style they like wrote down the stuff I was saying about performance and like tried it out in another battle and um you know people hear like uh hearing from people that they wouldn't normally hear from and just all the things that people say and it's fucking super um complimentary and it makes me feel hopeful because it's not always easy to keep going with this stuff um and to believe in myself to be completely honest but um not that my only belief in myself should come from outside, but it does fucking help when people tell me these things. So if you do listen, please share the shit on your story. Please tell a friend. Please tell me that you listen or what you like to listen to or whatever. And um, yeah, keep tuning in. Subscribe on YouTube. Follow the Instagram. Tell a friend to subscribe on YouTube and follow the Instagram. And um, yeah, I think we're coming up for nearly an hour, at least over 50 minutes. So that is way too long for you to have been listening to me talk um so i'm gonna go now and i think that's it peace guys have a good week see you next week bye that's all my name, y'all is big I'm pop for shit, really get risk That's true no more and I get a chase You sell and run on my pants and my chase She's not a dress, he never miss I eat up flesh, you know the rest I'm a pun and couple of less Shine like the sun, you truly blessed Just don't pretend, in the club like a Uber DJ This is on me, got my Gucci shirt wet Give me my bag, I'm too used to the rest I'm with this dude where they see you for this I heard this shit's where they do my best I'm the boss when I kick that shit in the desk Go to cool fast where they end with an S now that I'm on, back on the road, we shut it down, but it ain't so. Chess in the streets, they number four, send on my feet, put it on toes, take it with me, double your dose, cover with angels, I'm watching my soul. They got a bit, it's bigger when gold, I beat it in the but I got the info. I feel like I'm chosen, covered in gold, 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 gold. I love for my girl, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. Something true, 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 true. Nothing but fun, man. She covered in gold. I'm off the gate, I think you risk, that's true no more and I get a chance. You sell a run on my pants and my chest, she's not a dress, clean up a mess, I eat up flesh, you know the rest, run up on her and couple of rats, shine like the sun, you truly blessed. You talk to me, you make love but like a Uber DJ, this is on me, got my Gucci shirt wet, they made my bag, I'm too used to the rest, I'm with this girl where they think you for this, I heard this shit's gonna do my best, I'm the boss man, I can't catch you the best, go to cool fast when they hit with a S.
Climb in a mold, back on the road, we shut it down, put it in their soul. Checks on the streets, get them a foe. Send low on feet, put it on toes. Take it with me, double your dose. Cover with angels, I'm scratching my soul. They got a bit, this big old window. Tell the feet in, but I got the info. I feel like I'm chosen, yeah. Covered in gold, 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 gold. The flame on the island, man, cash gun up on the lid. Got pots to be colored, got CCs, you may see. Tell the kick, it's a couple of hours.